Good morning. I'm Bradley McAllister, founder of Spirocraft, and I'm still in the control room. I didn't quite get my Facebook feed turned on before the intro video stopped, so I am working on that right now, and I'll be out there in just a moment. Just got to get everything going on a Monday morning here. Let's see. Get this thing up and going where I can see it. All right. Good deal. Dwayne Chandler, good morning, Dwayne. Um, I may have missed a question you had over the weekend in the chat column on the website. And if I did, I apologize. I don't have a clone, but I wish I did. Okay, so let me see here. I think I'm I think I'm set. I think I'm set. Relatively speaking, at least I have everything turned on. So, I I missed my fancy intro of being standing right here, but hey, it all works. It's all good, you know? Um make sure to let me know that you can hear me, see me real well. Hopefully the audio is on sync today. Uh I checked it the other day through this system and it should be so hopefully i'm not talking like a godzilla movie you never know what you're going to get some days good morning frank nice to see you glad to have you in the stream with us today everything is good good <laughs> other than my voice cracking first thing um yeah last week it was running behind and i don't know why i have Maybe a sneaking suspicion uh, that I had rebooted the router. I'm still getting some some um, frame rate issues in the stream provider, and I'm not sure what that is. Hey, Michael. Uh, Mom is here. Uh, good to see Mom. Good to see Michael. Says sounds good. Yeah, so last week I had, and I still have some, some little gremlin with my frame rate, and it drops every once in a while, and I'm, I don't know why I got all the good stuff. And I had run in and, and rebooted the router, and I left everything on. And I'm thinking that maybe that is what caused the issue last week with the delay. Not sure. Um, <clears throat> apologize for it. Hopefully it won't be here today. I am recovering from a wonderful long weekend of the product showcase. That went well. Had a good time. Three days. I've been out here. Friday, Saturday, Sunday from 11 to 6. Uh, had lots of folks show up. Had had a good event, good sales event. Um, if you missed out and you're here, the coo coupon code is actually still active today. And the sale prices are still on the products in the store. So it's not too late to jump in there and get something that you need on sale. I guess I can get this big guy out of the way. <coughs> Is not finished, so that's why I left it on the the chuck. I still got a little ways to go inside, but it's pretty cool with the hole in the side of it and all that. Um, that's a fun project. I love doing hollow forms. All right, where am I at? Are cameras adjusted? No, this one is not adjusted at all. We'll get it right in here on the action where things will be that. Like they should be, and uh, get the focus set. Should be good. So I had no issues out here that I'm aware of this morning, but my phone went, my phone screen went black uh, about an hour ago, and so I had no theoretical access. And it was the I knew what it was. The screen display was. It was turned all the way to dim, and I had to get in the right lighting to where I could see down through there and get it turned back up. Because you know how it is, we can't function without our phone anymore. Um, sad, but true. So today, I've got this piece of resin, and I'm going to get a paper towel. This thing's got mold release. This is a piece of resin that I cast during the product showcase, and I decided it would be the perfect little project to turn today. Not that I was being lazy, but then I, I didn't have to come up with something. 
I just needed to come up with something to do with it. Hey, that lacquer thinner takes the mold release right off of there. Um, and so I was thinking Christmas ornament. And not that I make a lot of Christmas ornaments, so this will be fun. And I didn't want to make a traditional, everyday, regular little ball. And I jumped in this morning while I was making the post because I didn't do it last night. I was tired. And I, and I saw this teardrop style, kind of a Christmas ornament, if you will, um, just on the Internet. So I grabbed that. And I thought, what a great idea. That's, I think that's what I'll do. And so that is what I'm planning to do. And this is just another simple, you know, out of the, the, the cup, the cup, coffee cup, soda cup, whatever, uh, resin blank cast up. It is got, it's red and got some kind of white gray. It's got some couple different glitters in it, uh, some pearl powders. We'll see what's in it, you know, more so when we get down inside of it. Hey, Joe's in here. Happy Monday morning to you, Joe. Uh, Dad says he's in YouTube. He's on YouTube to start with. Good deal, Dad. Now we just got to get you to spell YouTube right. We'll work on that when I come up at Thanksgiving next week. But, hey, if you're there, I'm happy. You're happy, I'm happy you're in the right place. So I'm setting this up in here. I've, I'm on the Sorby Chuck. You can just not quite see it. I got the headstock just a little bit. Well, I'm going to leave it where it is. Um, I'm on a Sorby Chuck because it had the right size jaws in it. But I have a plan for this because I was, I was thinking about it after I had decided what to do. And then I realized, how am I going to hold this crazy thing if I make this teardrop? So I, I kind of got a plan. Uh, Michael McEwen, good morning. You're up early. I know it's early up there in the frozen can Canadian tundra on the west coast. You're probably on the coast where it's 70 degrees, but I got to give you a bit of grief. Um, so I'm listening to this crunch. There's a few pockets down in the bottom of this. But I think she'll be good. Just letting it settle in there. I, sometimes I get little pockets of resin. Hey, Sue, Dr. Bailey. Thank you for dropping in. Um, right down in here, and you can just barely see back there on the tendon. And, and there's my gap. These are actually spaces in the, these big spaces, there are spaces in the, the actual jaw. So here is where my, my gap is, which is, you know, a quarter inch or so. Well, so that's perfect. But you get... When I cast these, I get some little pock marks of things sometimes. And I also I see a little split right there. So I hope I don't have trouble with this guy. If it flies off, it's going to be a bad day. Um, but we'll see what we get. If it flies off, well, then we'll end up doing something different. Um, but nonetheless, we're going to make a teardrop-style ornament out of it. And I had to rethink how I was going to do it. And I've come up with a plan. And this end, the big end, is going to be the, the upper top, and then it will taper down. And I'll do 75% uh, of, of the shape is what I came up with. And then we'll go in and hollow it out and then finish out the little, the little teardrop end and part it off. Uh, that's my plan. Have I tested this? Absolutely not. Uh, I'm just like anybody else. I get out in the shop. I have an idea. And so I want to go with it, and that's kind of what Monday Methods is about. Let's try things that are new, um, work through it, see what uh, stumbling blocks we run into, issues, and then we work through whatever it is until we get it figured out. Michael says, been up for hours and no 70 degrees. We're in the middle of what they are calling an atmospheric river. Torrential downpour for the last three days and it's still going. Well, that's no fun unless you're a kayaker or rafter and want to go out rafting. Um, well, don't flood, Michael. So I think I'll bring a tailstock up here as well. I have one here. It's buried. It's been a chaotic weekend a little bit. Ah. All right. And something in the center. And I think I'll use cup center 
Or... That's the seven eighths. <sighs> God, who made a mess in this place? There's all kinds of things in everything. That, goes, that won't go through there. I know what we can do. We have compressed air. There we go. No, Joe, it's not a it's not a half inch um, revolving sub center. It's the seven eighths. <laughs> Rivers are way too wild for any of that. Thankfully, basement is still dry. That's good. So we just want to lock this guy in because like I say, I've, I've heard some popping down in there in my tendon. And uh, if I have to turn a new one on it, I will. But So I want to be between centers here where I know I'm nice and safe. Let's see how this guy spins. Not well to start with. Let's see if we can't get a, another shot in there. If it doesn't jump. There we go. Much better. We can turn a thousand nice and steady. There's the overhead view. Looks like it's going to stay in focus. I set the cameras and the end view. I love this end view. I don't know why it's headed over there. Uh, the extra glitter in the top. Too bad that you know it won't end up staying that way. But hopefully this glitter floated down through the piece as we went. Um, so yeah, uh, one of the things I stated in, in the write-up for this morning is high-speed steel tools and carbide tools. I, I saw a post somewhere else, um, not that I usually actually read much of the, in, the, in the groups, but I saw a post and somebody was asking about could you use, can you use high-speed steel tools or do you have to use the, the negative rate carbide cutters? And I did some experimenting with this for myself back in the summer now. And, and indeed, you can use uh, high-speed steel tools uh, to turn the resins. This is epoxy. Um, epoxy and urethane, I'd say, fine. The polyester is super brittle. It's going to make you really work. Um, the negative rate carbide cutters do make it much easier um, to, to turn the resin. You do need to keep your high-speed steel tools sharp. And it is a little trickier, um, but not undoable by any means, because before the carbide negative rate cutters existed, we had to use something. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of mix up some tools a little bit along the way on this project. Um, for the sake of time, to keep life somewhat easy, I will use the Easywood tools, the negative rate cutters to start with. And then I'll work into uh, some high-speed steel tools uh, along the way, just wherever it fits. And I'm not going to spend a long time there. Because they get dull fast, and then you want to go over and sharpen, and that takes time, and we only have a limited amount of time. Because I have lunch with my wife today when I get done here. Rich is in here. Good morning, Rich. Hope you're healing up there, buddy. I didn't see your name up there a minute ago. Uh, good to see you. All right. Where am I at? Who's on first? I'm still a little scattered from the weekend. Not surprisingly so I have a I have a, I'm gonna change a cutter on start fresh I have a CI3 midsize maybe I go mini this weekend but nonetheless yeah I don't think I think need anything more than mini um, I want to put a fresh cutter on here it's a fresh project I know I have a CI3 over there so I'm gonna change this out real quick and I'll also I know that I have a fresh CI6 R2NR over there. So let's start with some fresh cutters. Rich says, heating up, healing up. Just got stitches out an hour ago, bruised and swollen, but still doing good. So Rich, you know, I'd like to say I, I, sh I shared my, my, f my uh, foot surgery picture with you. Don't do the one thing that I did. I mean, you can, but you'll get yelled at. I went into the doctor's office, you know, a month out or whatever, 
when I was supposed to still be in my boot, but I was tired of wearing the boot. And so I, I had my crutches under one arm, my boot in the hand, and walked into the doctor's office. And he looked at me and just started shaking his head. He said, what's the point? You're not using the crutches. You're not wearing your boot. I said, yeah, I know, but I thought I'd bring them in case you yelled at me for not having them on, which he did. He shook his head, and I healed up nonetheless. Okay, so let's get this fresh guy on here. We'll use a, a fresh new screw as well. Because this will be uh, the, the CI3 size negative rate cutter will be our main, our main cutter our workhorse uh, tool for this project uh, with the exception of going on the inside where we'll be in there with a, a CI5 cutter on whichever size tool I choose to use. Um, I don't know if I'll use the, the micros or the midsize hollowers from Easywood to go inside of this. Just kind of depends on how it plays. I wish they would stop putting the screw in the bottom part of the bag. I've been after Easy Wood for years. They don't listen to me. It's such a pain in the neck. The theory says you need to screw. You know you need to screw. You're going to use the screw. Put it in with the cutter. But that's my opinion. I tell them that. They don't listen. It's okay. So I get situated in here. Now, one thing I did the other day, uh, you probably weren't around because it was on the, during the product showcase, these little Allen wrenches, well, you know, they get worn. You use them a lot. They get worn. Unless, of course, you buy your cutters from Spidercraft because if you buy your cutters from Spidercraft, you get a new wrench every time I send you out a cutter. And so you always have a fresh wrench, too. Um, but the ends of them get worn out. So go over to your CBN wheel or grinder, whatever you got, and and. Take just a little teeny bit off of it. You might get a little bit of a burr. Um, but make sure you've got a good end on there, or otherwise you run the risk of stripping out the screw head, the Allen in the wrench to start with. And that's bad, as we know. Okay. We've got our speed set. Let's get our tool rest height set, and then we'll start turning on this guy. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay. That looks good. Everything is set. Let's go to the overhead for you. We got a thousand RPM speed. Oh, if uh, if the if I lose my voice, if I lose, if you lose my audio, uh, please holler in the chat column as soon as you can. I I think I'm on fresh enough batteries. I went through a lot of batteries this weekend, so just let me know. Okay, let's get this guy round. I'm hoping it has some really pretty patterns down inside. Now this piece is still fairly green. I cast it on Saturday. Today's Monday. But one thing I want you to take note of, if you can hear the sound of this, I'm going to lift my face shield part up, not my goggles. Just lift up my face shield to where I can get my microphone closer to this. I want you to hear this sound right here. If you can hear it, it went away. It had a certain little chatter to it. Um, and sometimes the bottom of the mold, uh, I have found the resin there gets a little overheated and is brittle. And that might be why I may have some issues with this. That's why when I was cranking down the, the, uh, chuck jaws, I heard a little couple of little cracks and I can see them in there. And if it overheats, sometimes it cracks. Now the top seems to be fine. Might be an issue down there at the bottom. Uh, it's always something that you should keep aware of when you listen as much as anything else. If you hear sounds that sound abnormal for what you're working with, when you're putting the jaws and you're tightening it down and you hear the piece cracking, 
that's an indication there's an issue. When you see cracks in it, that's really an indication. Um, if I have any concerns, I'll turn this around not once that's round, chuck it up, make a new tenon a little bit shorter, and have good fresh resin. So I'm going to keep listening to this guy as I go. And if I don't like what's going on, we're going to change that up. Okay. Back in here. Just to clean this up. I'll put you on the end. You can you can barely see the tool right now, so I'll put you on the end because this is where I'm working. And I just want to get it round enough so that it's not out of balance. I need to file my tool rest and put some wax on it. It's a little a little jumpy there. Let's do that real quick. I'll stay in my ribbons. Quick file of my tool rest. The tool's kind of dragging on it. Especially for something that's pretty fine, we need this to be nice. I'm going to grab a little wax. This is just Yorkshire grit. I'm just going to take my finger and Yorkshire grit the top of this a little bit. And if I was lucky, I would actually have some wax wax in here, but I don't think I do. But that'll be better than nothing. Okay. Now, I like the colors that are showing up here already. I'm starting to see more patterns in there as soon as I, I took that off. Um, I'm going to take a negative rake radius cutter. And I'm going to come right in and clean up the top here, make sure it's flat. Just takes away all that nice little glitter, I'm sure. But it gives me a better idea of what we're going to be looking at. So I like, the, I like the swirls in this. This looks like it could be a pretty cool ornament. Now I see some buffering happen out, happening out there on Facebook on the feed that I'm watching. I hope it's not an issue. Nobody's hollering, so hopefully it won't be. Um, let's go ahead and just, I'm going to leave this just where it is. I'm going to leave this in the tenon until when I take the tailstock away, it might become an issue. In which case I'll have to deal with it. I don't really want to change things out if I don't have to. So, I think we're going to start to shape the overall top shape and come down in um, and make our teardrop. And then I'm going to leave the teardrop, obviously, um, substantial in size. And I'm probably going to bounce back and forth with my hollowing. Because I will be hollowing out here on the end, and so I'll have more leverage... Uh, there'll be more leverage on the piece in the tendon, especially if I have issues back here. So I may bounce back and forth between making the shape, taking some out, making the shape, taking some out. I may just work my way down in steps. That may be the better call today. Okay? So let's make a little bit of shape before we take the tailstock away. Uh, I will leave you in the overhead. Let's begin this process. Material removal. Jumping to the end camera. I have to think teardrop in my head. I have to remember the picture that I posted. And 
And now I was thinking back early this morning on this when I first thought of the project. I said, well, maybe I'll do a, a classic ornament that we all you see uh, regularly with icicles and so on and so forth. And I thought, no, let's do something a little different. puppy in here. So I'm going to start to just take a, a good bit of material out of here. I don't want to overheat. I'm not going to hurry. Kind of fun to to uh, be working here, turning here, and watching. I'll turn this over here. I'm, I'm turning here, but I'm actually watching the monitor up there. I uh, kind of practicing to. I know it could be crazy to not look exactly at the work, but I'm turning here and I'm watching up there on the screen to see what the look what it looks like. So that's how I know that I can, if I look up, I can see that you can't see it as well. Clearly because of all the chips and the no background. So what I need to do is I need to envision if I use if I follow this angle where is that going to end up um, to give you an idea let's see if this will show my head I'm going to stick my head in the way for a second I'll, I'm going to go to the end camera for a sec if I go right there and throw a tool on the floor so I would end up just shy of being in the bottom okay and I, I think I need a little bit more angle to get my point so I need to take some more material out of right in here okay and I need to get my tool back that rolled off good thing it's a wood floor in here and I, what I'm doing is I'm setting the angle. It's not so much about taking material away because I want to leave plenty, but I want to set the angle for my teardrop. And that, that's that's probably an inch and a half right here, which is is um, going to give me plenty of stability. Now I'm going to come up here at the top, and I want to clean this up because once I hollow this out, and and if I was lucky enough to have this really thin uh, light would shine through it, and that would be super cool, and I won't be able to go back here. So I want to get this as cleaned up as I can. I'm a little. I'm um, still a little too flat here. Okay. Um, the only entry hole we really need is a hole to uh, mount your hanger. But I need a hole big enough, obviously, to uh, get in here and hollow. And then we could make a little kind of finial out of something uh, with a hole in it to hook a hanger on that would drop in there. So there's lots of different uh, ideas here. But you see I've got some chatter here still. So I'm going to clean that up, 
refine my top rotation shape. Let me go to the, uh, yeah, I'm on the end camera for you. And then as I said in the post, um, I'm not going to polish this to the nth degree. Sorry for my reach. Um, it's going to get a lacquer finish. I see that dart starting to do weird, weirder things in that tenon. We'll see what happens. Um, so I'm not going to. I'll sand a little bit, but it's going to be it's going to be finished in lacquer, which makes it a lot faster and easier to finish it. Okay, this is a good time, I say, to also play with a, a freshly sharpened high-speed steel tool. And I sharpened up a spindle gouge the other day. A low-profile Carter & Son spindle gouge. Sharpened up a number of things. So let's try this. We're going to change a handle around here. I don't have an extra handle hanging out. So we were in the end camera. Um, I've got a bull gouge and a spindle gouge here. That is a low profile spindle gouge. They've discontinued that. And then this is a little uh, 3 8 bowl gouge. So we're going to play with this little spindle gouge here. I have had success before with them. I have to grab the right tool here. One that I can change out. Um, I've got a bowl gouge here. Let's, before I change this tool out in this handle, I've got a bowl gouge. Uh, their half-inch bowl gouge, just for yucks, just for pure yucks. And you actually can get a very, very nice finish off the tool. Okay. Surprisingly, that chatter that we had before... You can see how smooth that is. So it's just a very light touch. And I didn't even resharpen this. It was pretty sharp. So don't let it be said, and this isn't even the, no, the tool that isn't, I know is sharp. Don't let it be said that you can't at least refine. And let me pop you into overhead. You, you can see the difference. There's the carbide tool. Um, and there is the high-speed steel tool. All right. So the finish speaks for itself in that regard. And I don't have a bias or a preference. I want whatever works best. I'm still going to switch over to the spindle gouge, but I just I can't resist doing this with a bowl gouge. I'm a bowl gouge kind of guy. Have been from the start. So that is, a, I mean, other than a mark, tool mark or two, that's actually a very, very, very nice finish right off of the tool. Okay. I'm going to take my mask off for a second here. Um, yep. Let's have a little fun 
This is naphtha. It's not denatured alcohol, but it's naphtha. But it'll do the trick. Let's see what this would look like shiny without putting anything other than something that's going to evaporate. Because that's impressive. I love the color swirls that I'm getting in here. And again, you know, not everybody has all the tools in the world or can go out and get all the tools in the world. And if you can find that something you have will do what you need and, and get the job done, well, by golly, that's what you ought to be using. So we're in the overhead. Get those extra chips out of the way. I'm watching in the delay. That's just a little bit of naphtha going on there. Okay. So make it shiny and glossy. And then I'll do, show you from the end. So that hasn't been sanded or anything, obviously. That's just right off of a, a high-speed steel tool. Now, I can see that inside this thing. This is cool. Um, I don't know that you can see that that you can see the colors down inside through and through and I poured when I when I when I cast this piece pop up here when I cast this piece I had the the red and the it was kind of it was white but then it kind of got muddied up with some pearl powders and stuff and then I had it was I had third red a third white and a third clear I poured the red and I poured the white until uh, I used it all up and then right down the middle of the pour I took the clear and just poured the clear straight down the middle and didn't swirl didn't do anything to it just set it in the, in the pressure pot um so now i've got great depth i've got glitter floating in there i'll do this one more time just because i like seeing this pop you back in the overhead So when I hollow this out, if I can make it thin enough without being scared and whatnot, and my tendon crashing on me, we'll be able to see right inside this ornament. So that that will be cool. Okay. And again, here's what it's looking like from the end. All right. Now, that being said, let's go ahead and I still want to do it with a spindle gouge. So pop up here, pop up there. I'm going to change... And put that freshly sharpened spindle gouge in here and see if I do better, worse, the same. I do love these Carter and Son Toolworks tools. They do, they stay sharp. You get them sharp, they stay sharp. Um, when it comes to my bowl gouges, spindle gouges for the amount that I use them, and these aluminum handles, uh, even though it's a premium steel and a premium handle, they're fantastic. They really work well. All right. All right. Let's see what happens with the spindle gouge here. Let's pop into the overhead. Of course, if you have any questions along the way, don't hesitate to holler. I love working with a spindle gouge because I'm no good at it. I always want to get better. And we're going to start with the end shot. Let's see what happens here. Oh, what a deal. So that was, this is sharp, but it is a little grabbier. I actually like my bowl gouge angle better. Get off of there. And what's happening is I'm not used to the spindle gouge and its angle. But it's, it cuts super clean and fine. I'm actually going to drop that tool wrist of fuzz. So 
So I'm taking more material than I want to. And that's lack of practice with the spindle gouge. Um, you know, it, it doesn't matter. Um, and I can even, I might even utilize this little lip that I'm building here as part of the profile. Let's see what happens when I go the other way. I may have leaned my head in there. So I actually, I just for me, I am much better control with my bowl gouge than I am with the spindle gouge. And that's just practice and familiarity with the, familiarity with the tool. So I'm going to change back over before I totally wreck this to my bowl gouge which isn't quite as sharp, but I'm more familiar with the angle on it, which is 45 degrees, as opposed to whatever is on that spindle gouge. Just a factory spindle gouge angle from Carter and Son Tool Works. Back to half inch bowl gouge. Clean up what I was doing here. I can't see it. I'm just letting the feel guide the tool. I see some little ring tool marks as I'm dragging the heel back there a little bit. So let's see if I can come in, lift the heel up. And this this corner of the gouge, tip of the gouge, might not be as sharp. As my left hand direction one was. Okay, so they, they definitely don't stay sharp nearly as long as the carbide. So here's what's going to happen. We're going to switch back to the carbide. And I'm going to go to the radius negative rate carbide. And let's see what happens when we clean this up with the carbide. Definitely easier to get the tool marks out. Smooth that surface back. We don't get the polished surface like cut like we were getting. Not, it's not bad by any means. I mean, it's very good. But we we're getting another level of polish. And it might be because a little bit of bevel rub was burnishing the resin along, along the way. Okay. So, I mean, that's perfectly smooth. Don't get me wrong there. Let's go to the end camera. Your Carter spindle detail came with a 35 degree. That sounds right. I just never checked them, but that sounds right. Did you keep the 35 degree, Rich? Or have you changed it over to something else? You kept the 35, okay. 
So, like I say, this cleans up the tool marks really well. Just It doesn't have that polished finish it was coming off the the uh, high-speed steel tool, and that's okay. I'm going to raise that tool wrist up. And I think, here's what I think I'm going to do in case I need it. I'm going to build, I think, a little tenon, a little step into the top of this. In case something goes wrong, I'm going to make it look ornamental. And it could be a bad idea, but I'm kind of hedging my bets um, on my tenon down here. So I'm going to give myself a little something that I can grab a hold of if I absolutely have to in a pinch, so to speak. All right. And there's nothing wrong with having that there. And I'll actually take a negative rake detail and put a little dovetail. So it'll just, it's a, it's a decorative, um, let me put you in the overhead. Yeah, your spindle roughing's at 45, that's right. Uh, this is a little decorative guy that we can also utilize if we have to. Nothing wrong with giving yourself a little bit of an out. So if you can have a, a backup plan that it's also decorative, there's nothing wrong with that. Because I'm... I'm Surmising that if we were to run into trouble and needed to to hold this guy, um, it wouldn't be much of a grip that we would need. Okay. All right. Chugging right along here. Flip my mask up. Pop you back up here for a second. Let's see what happens when we take the tail stock away. See if she shakes and rattles and rolls. Do 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 do. Up oh, just a fuzz. And we're going to clean up this top and then make our entry. Now, I could drill could drill a hole down through here. I don't want to take the time. Um, I don't have all my stuff set up. Or I, don't even, kind of, I kind of know where it is, but you know how that works for me. So I'm not going to drill down through. We're, we're just going to hollow um, in, a, in a normal fashion. Drilling a hole would make it a lot faster and easier. Uh, I completely agree, but we're not going to go there today unless I really get frustrated and decide to change my mind. It's kind of funny. I, I like turning very large things and I like turning very small things. The stuff in the middle these days, not so much. And then what, what I find most useful is the tool control that helps you, you develop with the small things helps you with the big things. Okay? All right, let's define our entry. Now, typically in an ornament, you, you drill like a 3 8 hole in there all the way down through it because you, you come out the other end and you've got an icicle on one end and, and all that. Well, we're not really going to worry about that because we're not going that route today.
Okay. I am going to use a CI5, and I'm probably going to use the number one hollower, because I know I have a fresh cutter on it. Okay, and let's take a look at what this guy looks like. We'll keep looking at it as we go along. Great looking piece of resin. Per perfect for our little Christmas holiday ornament. Perfect. Okay, let's get set up to go straight down the center of this guy. Do a little drilling. Need to raise my tool rest up a little teeny bit. There we go. I don't think my arm's in the way. I like this tool because I have a lot of control with it. It's not going to flex. It's very stable. So I go back and forth between taking some of the edge, uh, hollowing, hollowing out into the corner, and going down the center. Keeping that nub turned away. Now this resin is still a little soft um, because it's only two days old. And that's why it's a little grabby in there. Ow, had a point right there in the very center. That hurt. Let's go get rid of that. Okay, let's see where we're at here. We're, we're a little ways down in there. We're, we've made it to right about here, which is not bad. Now, first question of the tool that I choose to use, I want to use. Let's see here. We have a negative rake on a, on a mini the mini hollowers. I have to admit I'm not a huge fan because of these rotate sometimes. But we'll give it a try. If it, if it do the trick, I'm all good with it. This is the 45 degree one. Move my controls over here because I'm about to lean out and turn myself off. Okay, so that's that. The tool I'd like to use. Can I get in there with this? Yeah. So this is a, a mid-size number two. And I'm going to st stop and see if I indeed, if I have a negative rake, another CI5 negative rake hanging around. If I do, I'm going to put it on there. Yes, I do. 
because that's the tool I prefer to use. Um, I just feel I have better control with the bigger tool. Uh, I can get in there. It's the same cutter. As long as I can get in through the hole, I have better control with this tool. That's me. It's my preference. And since I'm the one who's turning today, that's what I'm going to go with. So we're going to whip this, change this out real quick. And I'm not even going to bother digging the screw out of there. This has a standard cutter on it right now. So putting on a fresh CI5 inside will give me the best uh, cutting edge that I can get in here. Flip this guy around. Don't drop anything in all the ribbons and chips. I did not clean up from the weekend in here. So the floor is a mess. So I'm going to come right over here over top of the lathe and pop that guy in there. As usual, only tighten with the short end. Okay. All right. Now, I have plenty big enough hole. I can get in there. I bet you this shaft will even go in there. So, we'll keep our number one over here. Pop you guys back to the number two camera. Make sure my tourist is back. The where I'm on the flat of the tool, right there, clean away some of the confetti. Okay, off we go. So it may scream and vibrate, but I have much more control and confidence in my control, which is important. If you're scared to death of what you're doing is going to wreck your piece, you're not getting anywhere. We'll keep her cleaned out. Almost need earplugs for the frequency of that. And so I'm kind of working my way back and forth all the way down to where I have, where I, the bottom is. Stop and check. Blow it out. Okay, it's coming out nicely. We have a ways to go. Halloween always takes a while. How many is it? 12.07. I'll try and go as fast as I can without breaking this guy. Again, I want you to see um, how this, I'm actually quite comfortable with the little tool. I wouldn't be nearly this comfortable. I got a good stance. Completely relaxed and comfortable with the tool and letting the tool do the work.
And the uh, the hardest part, it's not technically hard to get to, it's just hard to remember, uh, is to get getting out to the, the furthest diameter there. So that's coming around nicely. I'm really, and again, I'm only working um, to about here. So far, I'm working from the top, very top, to about the largest diameter right there. And when I put my finger in, that's where I'm at. Okay. So that's what we'll keep working on. I'll leave it on the overhead there for a little bit. And when I want to take some depth out, I can rotate the tool. So I keep cutting off the tip of the tool as much as I can. So you just have to be patient and take your time. I'm going to blow the chips out of there. Okay, so the top is in great shape. I can see my finger from the outside uh, through the top edge there. I don't need to make it paper, paper thin. Okay. Just enough to where we can maybe see through it.
it's interesting how the transmitter batteries always seem to go before the receiver batteries. Don't know why, but they do. So I should be back now, and let me check there. Yep. If I wasn't so ha having so much fun, I'd notice the little bars, the little auto the audio meter bars are uh, not going up and down on my upper monitor there. But now I'm back, so life is good. Uh, so back to my flashlight. Yes, indeed. So now, cause, and I bought this special just for doing this. So now we can see what we're doing, the, 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 uh, the labors of our work. So the light will pass through. Now it's thinner up here. As, and even though it's, it's lighting up, the, the resin isn't turned away past where my finger is right there. So it's much brighter up top. Okay. So that lets you know that, you know, you can, what you can see through it. And we have these holes, these, these areas right in here that are going to let light pass. Okay. So having a little flashlight uh, is a great thing for four bucks. And when I lose it, a story I was telling you, I may have lost the battery. I was in Colorado most of the summer and a truck driver buddy of mine came out and he took, I gave away my snowmobiles and my snowmobile trailer and he loaned me a big cargo trailer. And he and his buddy, they both had these little lights all the time on them. And I was amazed at how many times they would whip out that little flashlight for whatever we were into. And I was like, I got to get up to speed on little flashlights. Okay, back inside here now. We're going to take some more out. I'm going to go back to the straight tool, go a little bit deeper with the straight tool. Then we'll hollow some more. Um, and again, because of time, what time we got? 12, 15, so I got 45 minutes. Um, I may not do this as usual to the nth degree because talking and turning eats up time. So I'm going to take a little bit more out of the center now. And I'm going to move my tool wrist in a little bit closer since I have this. So far, everything is good here. Nothing has crashed. Keep your fingers crossed, gang. Um, I'll go to the end camera and hopefully I don't get in the way. I'll try and look up and see if I'm in the way. I try and stay out of the way. My shoulder might drop in there. Hopefully not. So I need to get right in the very center, and bore my way down in there, she's a little grabby, we're going to move that up as far as we can, you're working purely by feel and by sound. Right down the center again. Now, I won't be able to get all the way to the fine teeny teeny tip with this, but we can make it pretty small inside if we work at it. Again, drilling right down the center. Okay, so out of curiosity, and I'm in the end camera, so let me show you where we're at. You gotta stop and load the air out anyway. I got my little finger in the right spot. So we're down to here now. That's so we're we're two thirds of the way in, um, just before getting to where we've stopped turning on the outside. One of the beauties of closing down operations in Colorado is I brought back several compressors and now I have real compressed air for my project and I can actually blow things out. It's fantastic. A little bit more down the center here.
I'll put you in the end camera again. It doesn't look like my shoulder's in the way. Okay, a little bit of shoulder there, apologize for that. All right, that's, that's sufficient for our project. So now I need to go ahead and finish doing some hollowing in here. I think I can get away with that. So it's a balancing act here. You want to make sure you have the flat section of the tool on the tool rest. Then you don't want to, but you also don't want to be too far over. And I'm, I'm fine. There's a mark here, theoretical mark, that you can't quite see. There's right there. There it is. It says don't go past there. Um, so let's take a little bit more out of the inside of this. I will go back to the end, try and keep my shoulder out of it. So just picking up where I was. And I had made several big steps when I was using the straight tool. So we're just gonna work those away first. I'm gonna lift this up so the audio is a little better. Um, several big steps I made with the, the number one tool and I just want to work those away so I can then glide down the side easily and smoothly. Now all the chips are going to be up here, the largest diameter, so we'll stop. If it gra we don't want it to grab the tool. And this is when we have to start cleaning things out more frequently uh, so that our tool doesn't get grabs. If it grabs the tool and we're, we're fragile and thin, um, we break our piece and then we get really mad. So the beauty is even though I'm going down into the piece, the centrifugal force is throwing the chips back up to the largest diameter. So it keeps them out of my way until I go to bring the tool back out. Stop and clean it out, because it, the more I take out, the more fragile it becomes. So I'm going to switch you back over to the overhead camera. I want to see if you can see the tool work. You'll see the chips forming up inside. So we'll give you that overhead shot for a little bit here. Let me stick my finger in there. Nothing beats your finger for being a caliper of what you got going on. Okay, I'm, I'm uniformed in my wall. It's, it's still got some thickness to it, but I'm uniform in its shape. And that's good. So now I can just keep going right on down this wall and refining it. Bring it out gently. You see all those chips there. We don't want it to overload and grab. 
again clean it out like i say more and more you're going to be cleaning more often as you get further down in here okay it's doing real good if you if you can see if you're lucky you can see my finger moving down through through the piece there in those clear more clear windows okay it's respectable now we'll, we'll take a little bit more just getting respectable I should rotate the tool around to be able to get a little bit more of the end cut. And gently come back up. Just riding right up the wall. Oop, as it starts to bounce, just go ahead and back it out of there. Be ever so careful taking it out because you can see how close you are to uh, hitting the, the lip of the piece. So that'll shine, that should illuminate nicely now. Yes, it does. Okay. That'd be cool to put a little LED in, in uh, the bot. When we make a, a little finial type of thing, when you do, and put a sign, shine some light down into this guy, uh, that would be really cool. Okay. And let's see, you know, I got to see how things are going to look. I want to see it lit up and shiny here for a second. There we go, lit up and shiny. And then lit up and shiny on the top. Trying to keep the flashlight in the hole. So this is doing exactly what I wanted it to do. I'm watching the, because there's a 20 second delay, I'm watching the, the uh, replay of the flashlight falling out. Uh, so, yes, Sue, this, I mean, this is exactly what I was after. Um, and when I made that pour on Friday with this, a little, you know, color here and there, really, and some light. And that's, that's far enough. We don't have to, you know, hollow this to the nth degree today. So, I think I'm going to stop with the hollowing right there. Okay. Now what I would I want to do I want to go ahead and, and work on this finishing the shape down to a point. Um I'm not going to go to the final final point uh but fairly close and then I want to sand what the amount that I'm going to sand. I'm not going to sand this a lot. Um I'll pop these off for a second. I'm not going to sand it a lot because I am going to put uh, a lacquer finish on it, and I don't need to have it perfect because the lacquer with a number of coats of lacquer, and then I cut the lacquer back, um, I get a nice smooth, shiny finish um, without a whole ton of polishing. Uh, you can do that. You can go the polishing compound route. There's nothing wrong with it. It just takes longer um, on a bigger piece like this. So let's go finish shaping some of this. Overhead is going to be the shot. We're in the overhead. There we go. Okay.
So we just start to or continue to follow that profile down, imagining where it's going to eventually meet up. See if there's a little air pocket. There's a little noise right in there. Um, no, it's not an air pocket. Just getting a little vibration right there. So I just I just got an idea. It just hit me. Uh, if I can find the right calipers, so I'm going to I'm going to take the the diameter of this inner hole, and basically if I have enough left here, turn a little teeny bit of a jam chuck um, to turn this around and be able to spray the lacquer, sand the very end, um, maybe even and turn it uh, to a finer point. But I thought, well, okay, I've got enough material left right here. Popping overhead, there's enough material here that I can make just a little teeny bit of a jam where I can put the end when I part it off and we can finish it off if we're having a good day. Something to keep in mind. Now, this has moved up in here from me hollowing it out. It's not perfectly round. It's going to, you have a little trouble making the transition there, so I'll be careful. So I'm going to switch over to the number one hollower for a smaller radius as I work my way down in here. Get off of there. Okay, I'm going to take the radius cutter and clean up these tool marks before I take too much out. Because as I get thinner and thinner, I lose that strength. And I have the potential for flexing. So let's clean this up here while we can. And now I'm looking at a, where's my camera here? I'm looking at a black background over there um, for my, to, to refine my shape. Got a little hump right in here. That's also a reason for not taking too much material out of the inside in this lower section. A little vibration right there is from the difference in um, the wall thickness, I do believe. How am I doing on time? 12, 34? I lost that monitor. 12, 33. Okay. We're good so far.
Okay. I think I'll go just a little further. The resin is pretty strong, but it's not absolute strong. And I want to leave enough that when I sand this, I don't break it. Keeping the stringers out of there is the toughest part, or the t one of the tough parts. And it's a balancing act between how much work do you want to do after the fact and how small do you want to risk making it um, in its point now. Okay, so one thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to take the detail tool and I'm going to make this even smaller without the without the radius to it very carefully just to give myself an idea of where that point's going to try and land those guys really wind down in there Get off of there. Take my ice pick. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Clean this up a little bit with our number one. As far as the profile goes. Now, if you had longer, if you had more, if you had a longer uh, mold, a cast, you could m have made the angle different and made a really long, uh, long tail uh, to this if you wanted to. Okay, so I think I'm going to stop right there at that, just because I don't want to risk um, breaking it. I'm going to have two stages to it, obviously. I do not have my sandpaper organizer organized up here yet. And we're just going to dry sand this. Real quick like. Not even sure what I have in here. Looking for some 220, 320, 420, 600. I see 600 up there. Haven't seen this in years. 220, 600. I'm looking for some 400. I don't see any 320. There's a piece of four. Been a little bit used. Anyway, I can worry about that. Use toothbrush to remove shavings when spinning. That's a good idea. I'll, I'll try that. Good idea, Michael. I got a toothbrush laying right there on the counter. Um, and before I sand, I see I need to fix a little bit more right here. Put my mask back on. I see a little bit of stuff I don't like. So I'll take the radius cutter. Pop you right there, right here forward again. Didn't notice that before. So as you can see I'm hitting up against there so I, I, there's a, a limitation to what I can do 
with that. I could be bold and try and take my spindle gouge or my bowl gouge and come down in here. I'll probably mess it up. But it wouldn't be the first thing I ever messed up. If I can get this cut where I want it. Famous last words. Okay, well, I didn't break it, and it cleaned it up, so I'll go with that until we part it off. Okay, let's just do a little quick cursory sanding again. I rely on the, the finish to give me what I need. Uh, overhead is fine. Pop you in the end for that up there. Fold this over, drop into that. I don't need to get all the tool marks out. Again, because the lacquer is going to fill. And when I build multiple coats, and then I cut the lacquer back after a few coats, it fills all that space. And takes care of it, makes it smooth right out. That could use some more work down in there, but I can't get there. I hate to do this, but but here we go. See if we can cut that with a little bit of 180, just take some of that wave out of it. We can always access this once we turn it around. Try not to get any coarser grit than you need to on a piece. Because then you just have to take that those grit scratches out. Okay. Where am I at? 400. Thank you, compressor. Going to be building a box for the compressor, putting it further away. But it's working for me for right now. 600, and that's as far as we're going to go is 600. Because the finish is our finish. We'll finish the finish, as they say. Okay, now, we're going to part that off, and then we're going to make a little plug, or plug, a little jam, at least we're going to attempt to, to turn that around. So let's see how this goes, after I get the shavings out of my glasses. I'm going to do it on time. 12.44, going to be right on time, I think. Right up to the mark. All right, and I'm going to use, I'm actually going to use this, the number one CI-5 at first, take a little bit more out of here, close in on it. Mm. 
I saw that one go to the floor. Okay, Michael says use a toothbrush. Michael's right. Of course, we just put blue chroma gilt on there, but that's all right. It needed a little blue in its Christmas cheer, didn't it? Good tip, Michael. Let's see. Here's my plan. Using Michael's toothbrush, the one that doesn't have chroma gilt on it. I'm going to call this Michael's toothbrush from now on. Arthur, how you doing, buddy? You got chroma gilt all over there. All right. I need the tool I dropped into the abyss. Now there is a, as you can see, if I show you here on the end camera, there is a way if I wanted to, I could cut back in here and cut the whole point, but I don't have a lot of, I don't have a lot of extra resin to try and make my little, um, jam with so I don't want to take too much away but I could I could cut back into here and continue that point like so down into a negative space I'll show you what I'm talking about a little bit more you have to be sure you have enough material Some of it's a little stubborn. Okay, so which I'm on the end camera. I'm I'm making a negative space back in here, where that and I do can just barely see it. The tip continues um, into there, and that helps you get close. I mean, I'm real close to where that tip would that point will be. And again, this is not a necessary method of, of getting to your, your tip point there, but it is an option. Because the further we do this, the, the more we can have of a tip. I kind of got myself on this kick now, I want to do this. Funny how I get caught up in my own little projects out here. You can't see back here in the overhead, I know. That's why I'm leaving you on the end camera. All right, so that's going to be what it's going to be. I'm going to reach. I'm just going to go ahead and cut through the back side of this now.
There we go. So now we have our we have our piece. Now if I have enough material here to make a little jam for that. Let's see. Because I took the center away. So we'll go back to the end camera where you can see me try and try and make this little jam. I believe I have enough. We'll see. Be close. It'll be real close. So when you stick that cutter up against the jaws, you know that corner's gone. Okay. I had brought, looking for, a special set of calipers I had brought. For the weekend that I never used. Don't want to have to do it the hard way. I don't see them right off. You check over here, set it inside, outside. I'm missing a couple of boxes of goodies. And that's in it. So I'm making just a little ledge because I don't have anything to measure this with. Kind of sneak up on it. There we go. Okay, so I've pretty much established that. Now the problem is this cutter is radiused, which makes it more difficult. They don't make a negative rake square. I keep after them, but they don't make one. This is a standard cutter square. Okay, voila, we have what we need there. I'm going to get some of this stuff out of my way, at least a little bit. So in the overhead, you can see now that it, that fit right on there. Just, because that's very fragile up on the top, okay? Now, it's, it's not enough that it can hold itself. So we're going to have to bring a, a center up on the tailstock and deal with this.
Do 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 do. So where did you go? I have a special little thing for doing this. If I can just find it. For bottle stoppers. I'm th I'm I'm doing this on the fly at the moment now. Imagine that. And I have an M2 cone mandrel, reverse, if you will. I didn't think this all the way through this morning when I came up with the project. To do this, so I'm frantically looking around for the right item and I'm not seeing it foo 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 well shoot okay we will go with this approach and see what happens is this an art object um, art, every, every piece I turn is an art object, right? That's pretty close. Okay. We're just going to hit this real quick. And then we're going to be out of time. And we'll throw some lacquer on it. All right, let's see what we look like here. Oh, shoot, I think I took the lacquer inside. Oh, here it is. A quick shot of gloss. Don't know why that looks out of... And there, that is looking good. I'll have to find something to leave that stand up on over time. That did exactly what I wanted to. Exactly. Exactly what I wanted it to. Okay. Well, thanks, gang. I know I got to run. Um... This is really cool. I had fun with this one. And let's be back out here next Monday. I thank you very much. I'll post pictures of this guy real soon. Talk to you soon.